Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Munch, munch, munch. Hello and welcome to Daddy 8 Sauce, where we discuss the challenges of being a man in modern society and what the hell that even means. Before we start, do subscribe to Daddy 8 Sauce on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast and please leave a review. Uh, I'm Kane and joining me this evening is Ryan. How are you going, mate? Not too bad. I'm, um, I'm in day whatever it is in the London lockdown over here and it just feels like it's the 50 something of december 2020 the year has just not finished yeah because <laughs> um, 30 30 30 to 40 days it's probably 40 days in now wouldn't you 20th of december so yeah but it's like 40 days into a lockdown that is our third or fourth lockdown and all, all numbers are just starting to blur into one at the moment over here so well, you probably, you probably would have cracked. A, you probably would have cracked a ton in total. Now you would have done a hundred days of quarantine across the various lockdowns, or pretty close to it. No, no, far more than that. We had a, we had three months between March to June. Uh, no, all of November was locked down. So between all that, that was four months, and then it's been another seven weeks. So probably up to up to raising the bat at the one fifty mark almost, mate. It- do you think if they had gotten a bit harder in June and just gone, okay, we'll take another month on and you know, really smashed it right down that it might have not got out of hand again? No, I think the horse had bolted. There's just too too many cases across. Um, I don't think the mistake was done in June. I think they were right to open that up from just one genuinely – a, uh, a mental health point of view, economy, all those kind of good things. Um, because summer over in Europe is like, there, there truly is nothing better. Um, and I didn't even get to taste what it normally is. It's, it's, a, it's a very, it's an oddly magical time. But I think the, the mistake was there was always going to be a second wave. They didn't plan for a second wave. But they knew that it was coming and then they didn't actually plan for it. So when they did the one in the circuit breaker in November or whatever, I think that was the failing in that they should have just gone hard there, locked down completely, maybe open up for a couple of days for Christmas, just a couple of people to see each other and then back into a lockdown. So essentially we would be now a three month stretch of virtually a lockdown, maybe one or two days for, for Christmas. Um, and that would, I think, we'd be in a very, very different situation to where we are now. Because I'm just looking, just bringing up the data and just looking at it in July, which is roughly in Victoria got pretty bad in August. Like we was hitting six, 600, 700 cases a day. The UK average around then was six or 700 a day as well. So just, mm. yeah, just, it's kind of like sliding doors, like Victoria and, you know, people criticize Dan Andrews and the government and, you know, the hotel quarantine and no one being assigned blames in that inquiry is ridiculous, but you know, they might've stuffed it up, but they also f- fixed it. And Victorian, the Victorian people kind of, you know, we did it really hard, but they kind of fixed it where the UK was like, kind of, it seemed a bit more laissez faire. And it was like, I was inevitably coming. We didn't maybe do as much as we should have to kind of maybe stamp it out. Like it's just. Uh. Yeah. I think, I think it's a really good point in that. I mean, the Victorian thing was definitely a shambles and the fact that nobody takes responsibility is just, piss poor leadership um but at least they have resolved it and gotten to a solution the uk having done the three months lockdown to get it down to 600 odd a day or whatever knowing that it would spike when they opened it um could have i think for planned and gone almost almost a pulse in pulse out situation to go right we're going to go three months and we're going to lock you down for three months then we're going to open for three months or one month one month something like that would it it, it's sort of like it's it still feels by the seat of the pants and it's like after 11 months of this shit you shouldn't be flying this at the seat of your pants anymore like you should put a little bit more thought into it but um yeah uh, it looks like it's going to be inevitably uh, locked down over here until at least April. Wow. So I'll well and truly crack the uh, double century. Yeah, that's 
very few batsmen make that as a test batsman. So yeah, it's high stats. May even may even hit the uh, magical three three four if you're an Australian or uh, push on to make three six five over the course of two oh, years. Yes. Which what would was, not surprise Matty, me. Matthew Hayden's record's three eighty five for Australia now. Is it? I can't remember exactly. Three eighty five versus Bangladesh. Yeah, something like that. And it's showing my cricket stats. So probably when I cared about cricket and sport a bit more, I had a bit more time to take those sort of thought, sort of things in. So it is January. We're getting towards the twenty sixth of twenty uh, sixth of January, which is a public holiday here in Australia. And you know we've got the tennis coming up. So the tennis has become a big issue now, and the people coming over, you know, from various places across the world, COVID hotspots, turning up in a, in Victoria and hotel quarantine, and people losing their minds over the fact that people are allowed in to play tennis. Um, uh, and that's that's the biggest news story at the moment because there's no real other news apart from COVID stuff. Still, still eleven months on. Yeah, and then you know the tennis players just being their self entitled selves, thinking they should just be able to waltz around and do whatever they want rather than going to hotel quarantine, and then they test positive. So yeah, yeah, it's um, it's certainly not the 2021 that I think that I think everybody thought it would be. Um, you know, with this thing still going to be a central point of, of 2021. And I guess it's, yeah, what, you know, January is a time for New Year's resolutions and all those kind of things, which we had a bit of a chat about some mm. thoughts that we had around that. Um, but what have you been doing this month? What challenges have you been taking up whilst we're trying to navigate this are we are we in a problem? Are we not in a problem? Healthcare crisis of the world. Yeah, well, I guess all you could do is really focus on uh, as selfish as it sounds. Sometimes all all you can kind of do in these sort of instances is focus on yourself and those people around you to kind of you know, in your instance kind of get through a day or get through a week and just tick off those tick off those quick singles on the way to you you're clocking up your two hundred or your three hundred. But just making little habits like, and that's what I've tried to do a little bit more in the three or so weeks since the start of the year. Uh, we're obviously a slightly better situation here. Albeit I went down to the local beach today and man, it was it was 37 degrees here today and it was the beach was jammed by 11 o'clock. So it was, yeah, it was pretty busy on there. But I'm just trying to make little habits to um, yeah, make the time pass. But also, I don't know, just little things which might help me out. Very nice, very nice. Um, I think one of the things that we're, trying to do what I'm trying to do over here is it, it, it's conflicted because we're um, we're in the lockdown and going stir crazy in, in the apartment and working plenty which you know is a, a blessing and a curse because it's something to do but then it's also quite taxing um, and you know it's one of the benefits I suppose of being in healthcare having quite a lot to do at the moment but um I've been reading a book called The Happiest Man on Earth, which was actually sent to me by one of the guys that I work with back in Australia. And he said, be, be in the right state of mind to, to read it. Uh, but he said, I really think it could help you because I've been quite down over here. It's, you know, the depth of winter in the UK, which is not great anyway, plus a whole lockdown. And it's from a guy called Eddie Jacou, who just clocked up he wrote it as a as a centurion clocked up he sees three figures 100 years old um as a holocaust survivor and essentially like i highly recommend reading reading the book um but we were talking a bit before getting on here about how you know there is a bit of with the whole covid situation there's a bit of just world anxiety around not dissimilar to wartime and this is a book about somebody who spent six years in various concentration camps and he was, a, he was a Jew during the Holocaust and all those kind of things. And, and the essence, it, it, it is a tough read because there's, um, there's some very you know, horrible things in there. But the essence that he distills everything down to is that ultimately like happiness is a choice and you can just choose to smile no matter what the circumstances are, that if you have friendship around you and you have good health and you've got a roof over your head, you can 
you know, choose to smile and, and show kindness. And, and in doing that, you can thus be like him, who is the happiest man in the earth, is essentially the premise of it. And I've found that surprisingly, well, ex- one, extremely helpful from a contextualization point of view to go, this is shit at the moment, 2021, we were all hoping potentially was the the, the uh, rid of COVID and the world cracks on. But here's somebody in context of going, well, at least I'm not in the Holocaust, basically. Mm, God, yeah. <laughs> going, it could, could be a whole lot worse. And, and it really is right in that I've been like journaling and trying to reconcile with it quite a bit around is, is happiness something that is external and not on you or is it within your locus of control? And can you just choose it? You know, can you just choose to go, well, I'm going to smile. And and psychologically, we know that that can create happiness. So it's it's been a really interesting read and I just finished it this morning, hence why it's top of mind. Well, it's funny, it's not funny you mentioned, it's obviously a pretty serious book, but when I clicked on the link, when you mentioned the name I brought up on the screen, I clicked on it. One of the books which were down the bottom as a similar product you might like was actually a book I just literally finished three minutes before we three minutes before we started recording tonight. <laughs> it's Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey, the uh, the actor. Um, and it's kind of yeah. it's kind of autobiographical, biographical, uh, but with some what you call sort of self help and of- life lessons mixed Philosoph- in it. Yeah, a bit of philosophical as well, because I've read that one. Um, it's much, much the same. It's all about, you know, red lights and orange lights and green lights, green light and the orange lights and the red lights might be something external to you, or the red lights and the orange lights might be something internal to you. It might be inside you. And you have to you have to turn those red and orange lights green to be able to continue on. So you know, life can be all green lights, or you'll get a you know, the last 12 months have been a lot of reds. <laughs> But eventually, yep. you know, the red will pass, or you can, you know, choose to turn that red light into something green and move forward. So, yeah, very similar premise between those two books, albeit from completely different sort of backgrounds and people. Oh yeah, very you got a um, Texan, you know, South American actor, or not South American, but Southern American um, actor. Um, and, a, and a Holocaust survivor, but ultimately around this premise of um, what what can you choose to change? Yeah. And if you can choose to change or choose to control. Control then, your controllables. Yeah, exactly. And, and, it, and it does become a little bit better. And, and in that, like it's still been a really shit situation over here and you have roller coaster days of anyone who's been through a lockdown, I'm sure can attest to you have um, days where you just have no idea why, but you wake up and you're just depressed as anything. And you just have, and you just got to call it as one of those days. And um, talking with a lot of people over here, that's what people are going through. And then you have days where you actually be like fantastic and thinking, Oh, this could go on for six months and I'll be fine and all that kind of thing. But beneath all of that up and down, it's, yeah, if you, I mean, both of these books, are, and, and if you think, like, what's, what are successful New Year's resolutions that people can do, it's ones that they can flip into that locus of control. And can you choose to actually just go, hang on a minute, you know, I'm going to choose to look at it and go, the once a a day coffee walk treat that I go on that's the coffee like the cafe is barely staying alive and could collapse you can go well that's a really you can play that as a really negative scenario or you can go you flip it and go that's a highlight and and that can be just highlighted as something as good as you know climbing Mount Everest if you choose to highlight it as such And that I found quite um, helpful in January of 2021. 100%. And yeah, very similar things we were probably going through here in Victoria three or four months ago. And in all honesty, I even lose track of the time when we were down to, we couldn't move outside our five kilometers and we could only go and see, we couldn't even see anyone, you know, see anyone. You could only go with people from your household and you had to stay within five kilometers or was it 25 and those sort of things. So like I've lost, I actually forgotten all the dates and times when all that happened. Like I'll talk to my, my partner about it and we'll kind of talk about, okay, 
we couldn't do something. And she goes, no, no, that was back before that. So it's just all that sort it of all it's blend. Just, it's it all, does all blend. It's an absolute blend. Yeah, it, it certainly does. Um, but I have tried to turn it into something with the whole dry jam thing that a lot of people, surprisingly, and I suppose one positive may be that um, over here, like double the amount of people compared to last year have attempted dry January. I don't oh, wow. know if they've, if they've done it. Um, got seven days to go, hanging out for that. But, and and January this year is typically just cruel where it's got five weekends and the 1st of Feb happens to be a Monday. Um, but it's, it's again around that, that whole thing of going, when this chaos around, what can be brought back to an internal control? Mm. Yeah. And we would love to have had a drink on the weekend. And, you know, you could eat, you can easily cheat yourself with this type of thing, but at least it's a, it's an opportunity to get to the end of Jan and go, I've done something. So even though I've basically not left the house all year, I still achieve something. Um, and, and I think that's going to be a challenge. You know, we talk about the challenges of the modern man here, but just the challenges of people for the foreseeable future is how can you still, because externally we're going to be a bit rough for a couple of years to come. Um, and you're going to have that holiday that you've been waiting on for six months. And then there's a pocket of outbreak in the Northern beaches of Sydney. That's now mm-hmm. just killed your Bondi trip. Um, and you'll be in an airport and that'll get ripped away from you and those kind of things. And how, how can we balance that? with still feeling like we're doing stuff. Yeah, just just a, a, an amusing aside. You you grew up in Sydney. Um, I, did. I had no idea the northern beaches of Sydney was f- was full of hipster wankers. <laughs> yeah, like, they're talking about like they'd be happy to be cut off because then you know as long as they could get their shipment of kombucha and you know their you know their different lattes in there. I was like, I didn't realize yeah. that was like a hipster wanker area of of Sydney. No, no, it's millionaire hippies, mate. The northern beaches of Sydney are millionaire hippies. If oh, you're yeah. lucky enough to have property there, but you're all, um, yeah, chai lattes, kombucha, and man buns in uh, in that pocket. Did not know that, but it was very easy. It could have been very easy to cut them off as well because only one road in and one road out over water. So, well, it's it certainly could have. Although where I grew up was um, Western Sydney, which was very very different to the hips to northern beaches i oh, know I've, I've, I've visited western sydney i prefer western sydney over the, i definitely prefer western sydney over the uh the hips is up in the northern beaches yeah it's a bit more real uh western sydney can be pretty dodgy though but um i definitely prefer it over the the northern yeah. beaches but, uh, but it's much just, like the Perth argument. They're just like, shut the borders. We don't want to be part of Australia anymore. That's what it's got to, got to here. I guess that's a di- one of the differences between it has been managed in the US and the UK and Australia, where uh, to, uh, Australia's more like the US, except we're not crazy um, in that it's really being pushed down to the States a little no, bit. No, no, we just don't have gun laws. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's a big difference. <laughs> well, it's been pushed down to the states here, so it's not like one person kind of deciding everything. It's the states, and you'll have Western Australia who are just like, as soon as an outbreak, anyway, boom, we're shutting the borders. Borders where, closed. Yeah, Brisbane, Queensland has been a little bit like that. New South Wales is just potting everyone who's shutting borders. It's just, it's kind of, it's internal fighting amongst the states, but all the states kind of are independent enough that they don't really care about the other states anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I, I can't. They're controlling. They're controlling their controllables. Well, that's true. It's true, and I think um, after every state saw what happened in Melbourne, everybody's just worried of that. Like to have to lock down the state for three months. Well, would be it, would be a nightmare. Australia's been seven days across the entire country of no community transmission, so it is only in hotel quarantine now, as far as we can tell. So as long as at any state, any state could be Victoria, could be New South Wales again, could be Queensland again. As long as we don't balls that up, we should be golden forever. Until you open the international borders. Yeah, but we won't do that until yeah, we won't do that until there's vaccines and things like that. But fuck, like, everyone's still worried. It's still the lead news story. Like you know, strains being found in oh hotel quarantine. Like it's not like it's out in the public. Like it's as long yeah. as the hotel quarantine does the job it's meant to do, we're okay. And I suppose it's, it's 
Oh, I think as well. When you know the the challenge of just the the toxicity of the news mm. that is, you know, we were talking just before coming on, but it's not in one sense it's extremely dissimilar to wartime in terms of we ain't shooting each other and killing each other. But in another sense, it's not that dissimilar of wartime because the only thing that is news in wartime is the war. Similarly, COVID's the exact same situation. Um, where, you know, we've lost freedoms and all these kind of things, which again happens in a war and those sort of things. So it's, it's also managing the just constant anxiety that is the news cycle. Yeah. And Rupert Murdoch being an asshole. Yeah, and that's in Australia. That, that may even get worse because Google have been Google are threatening to pull out of Australia because you know the government are trying to make them pay for you know using the news which is published on you know, underlying websites. So like Murdoch and Fairfax and stuff will you know will have to be paid by Google, and Google are like, well, we'll just pull out of you know, pull out of Australia. So then you you literally almost back down to you know two media organisations and the ABC or two ownership groups and the ABC running a news service. Yeah, I can't imagine that Google's going to be, I can't imagine Australia's going to let Google pull out. So, on the, yeah, it's on the back of... Too, on too the back, big to fails type thing. Yeah, on the back of all this COVID stuff, then we have like that underlying, you know, all that sort of underlying politics in the economy and stuff. So as soon as we even get out of COVID, we're going to have all this other stuff to deal with anyway. Yeah, it's going to be, I suppose, like, what are you doing or going to do? I mean, calling that out as a spade of the next few years is just going to be a negative as shit news cycle. It's going to be COVID. Then it's going to be everybody's got no money because mm-hmm. we've blown it all with government handouts. Then it's just... You know, we're in for a we're in for a bunker for the next three to five years. How are you going to find joy? Well, is, this goes back to what we were talking about before: controlling your controllables, looking internally. You know, I like listening to music. I'll just I'll put on music for an hour a day or something and, and blast it out loud. Just things which will you know lift your spirits. Go for a run. You know, create your little habits which make you happy. That's all. That's all you can do. It comes back to again. Like what you were talking about before, being able to con- control what Go you have micro control over. rather than macro. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's um, one one thing that I see that's going to be really positive out of this that I'm very hopeful for is the reemergence of the importance of the local community. Um, when people do go a bit more micro and you know that kind of thing, and and we've realised that we need social connection like it is driving me insane just missing people um i think that can be a a real positive it's gonna it's gonna come and and bring people a lot of joy in what's gonna be and and just avoid the news as well that's always that's always a good suggestion (laughs) <laughs> well, it's, as always, it's been a joy speaking to you tonight on Daddy X Last. I think it's a really good place to wrap up for this week. Uh, we'll always be here. We'll be here. So you can always tune in to us on a weekly basis. And, you know, we weren't all, you know, beer and Skittles and good times tonight. But, you know, next week we probably will be. Well, do subscribe to Daddy X Last if you haven't done already. And while you're there, please leave a review. Tell your mates about the podcast, especially if they are guys. Most of all, thanks for listening. And we'll be back next week with some good vibes and another episode. So until then, have a great week. Catch you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.